Oh, happy Veterans Day to you all. Ladies and gentlemen, I am uh, Vice Mayor Rosanna Verderaliga. I am your MC for today. And thank you so much for being here on this beautiful day in our beloved city of Vallejo. We will now have the uh, Color Guard, U.S. Naval Sea Cadets Corps. And after that, we will have the National Anthem by Francesca Tagle. And then Luther Hendricks to do the, in the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. And then Reverend Ray Bernardus to do the uh, invocation. Let's get started. that can remain standing, please uh, remain standing, and for those that need to see, please go ahead and do that. Thank you. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held by the twilight's last gleam broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave or the landing of the free and the home of the I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Gary, tell us. Mark time. March. Step. Step. Our Father and our Creator, we are gathered here with grateful hearts to honor the brave men and women, our brothers and sisters, sons and daughters, who served in the United States Armed Forces to preserve our national freedom. We honor their service to God and nation and for their gifts to our nation, namely life and liberty. And finally, Lord, we ask that you would send your grace to guard all our active duty men and women serving in remote outposts, sailing the wide oceans, soaring in the vast open skies. We pray in the name of your loving son, Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. I welcome you all to the Mare Island Naval Cemetery, the oldest naval cemetery on the West Coast in our historic and beautiful city of Vallejo. And uh, would like to give acknowledgement uh, to our award-winning U.S. Naval Sea Cadets and for 
We thank you for expertly parading the colors like they always do on our annual ceremonies here for Memorial Day, Veterans Day, and Roots of America. These cadets belong to the Rear Admiral Richard O'Kane Division, based here in the Bay Area. And during World War II, Richard O'Kane commanded the Mare Island-built submarine USS Tang, which is credited with sinking the most ever enemy ships and tonnage in U.S. submarine history. And Richard O'Kane was awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor. Let us also thank U.S. Navy veteran Chuck Jameson of the Scottish American Military Society post-1921 for gracefully playing the bagpipes. Let us thank former Naval Sea Cadet and now California State University Maritime Academy Cadet Francesca Tagli for fabulously singing our national anthem. Let us thank U.S. Marine Corps veteran Luther Hendricks for leading the Pledge of Allegiance. He fought in Iwo Jima and other islands during World War II, and he received the Montford Point Marines Congressional Gold Medal during President Obama's term. Let's give him a big hand. Let us also thank Reverend Ray Bernardes, a U.S. Army veteran, for the invocation. He is the founder of Global Center for Success, based here in Bear Island, which provides immense assistance to our less fortunate neighbors here in the city of Vallejo. Are we ready? Are you excited? What a beautiful day, and let's yeah. express our thanks to our veterans, our troops, and the families that are here today. Yeah. World War II veterans, please wave your hands if you are here. <laughs> Korean War veterans, please wave your hands. <laughs> Joe Nicholson was in, is in the front page of the Times Herald today. Thank you, Joe. Vietnam veterans, please wave your hands. Thank you for proudly serving in the 1960s and 70s. Operation Desert Storm veterans, please wave your hands. Thank you for proudly serving in the 1990s. The Global War on Terrorism veterans, which include Operation Enduring Freedom, and Operation Iraqi Freedom, please wave your hands. Thank you for proudly serving from September 11, 2001 to 2022. Peacetime veterans, wave your hands. Thank you also for deterring war and ensuring our peace. Last but not the least, let us thank the families and friends and caregivers of our veterans. Please wave your hands. Family members, caregivers. Thanks to you all because of your unconditional love and sacrifices that have helped our veterans have a better and higher quality of life. Thank you. I am honored now to introduce our Mayor of Vallejo, Mayor Robert H. McConnell is a decorated combat vet veteran who valiantly served in Vietnam with the U.S. Army 9th Infantry Old Reliable Division. He was elected to the Vallejo City Council in 2011 and elected mayor in 2020. He is also a successful full-time attorney with three decades of experience. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Vallejo Mayor Robert H. McConnell. Thank you, Vice Mayor. <clears throat> and to all of you, thank you for being here. The veterans community is extremely appreciative of your efforts to come out to, to this day. And I wanted to acknowledge the work of so many people who have finally made this a VA facility, which we escrow closed on Thursday, I'm very happy to say. <laughs> and that was coordinated, made possible by officials at the federal level, the state level, the local level, the districts, private industry. There were many, many people involved, just like a military operation. It took an awful lot, but you can see the results here today. 
your coming out today to indicate your support of the veterans community is extremely important because without that support, we feel isolated, ignored, shunned. And when we hear the response of your clapping to our many lists of veterans, we're heartened by that response because we know we are accepted and we have come home. So thank you for being here and I appreciate your continued support. Vice Mayor. Thank you, Mayor McConnell. Thanks for right. raising this occasion and your support of the veterans community in Vallejo. Now let us uh, welcome uh, the representative from Congressman John Garamendi's office, Mayor Pillet. Good morning. Good morning. Um, first of all, I am the proud son of a World War II veteran. My father was working on Mare Island when World War II started and Pearl Harbor was bombed, and he answered the call to service and served all his time in Pearl Harbor. So the congressman is not feeling well today, so he sends his apologies, and he asked me to read this letter. Every day, United States service members bravely put their lives on the line for our country. The men and women who have served our nation faithfully deserve not only our respect and thanks, but our assurance that they will have the resources necessary to thrive as civilians. I am honored to represent current and former service members and have consistently worked to ensure they are treated justly. I have spent my career in Congress fighting to fulfill America's sacred obligation to care for the countless men and women who bravely served our country. In 2019, I introduced the Oath Act, a bipartisan effort to ensure active duty military personnel and veterans can accurately document any toxins they were exposed to while deployed so they can receive VA treatment for any health issues stemming from that exposure. In 2020, my bill, Merchant Mariners of World War II Congressional Gold Medal Act of 2020, was signed into law. This long overdue recognition was a chance to reflect on the bravery, sacrifice, and service of the Merchant Mariners the oft-forgotten American military branch with the highest per capita casualty rate of any military service branch in the war. I was proud to have authored the legislation to make this possible and felt honored to present these brave men with the just recognition they deserve. I was also proud to support the Honoring Our Pact Act, signed into law in August 2022 to address the issues affecting veterans exposed to toxins. This legislation will finally treat toxic exposure as a cost of war and will deliver the health care, support, and relief owed to impacted veterans. As the top Democrat on the Subcommittee on Readiness, I play an integral role in shaping the National Defense Authorization Act, also known as the NDAA. This annual bill sets a policy for U.S. military, and each year I make, it, make sure it encompasses the interests of our veterans. The NDAA for fiscal year 2023, I added provisions to address forever chemical contamination throughout military installations to protect, to protect service members from the hazardous chemicals that would have lifelong impacts on their health. Our veterans represent the best of our country. The men and women who have served our nation faithfully deserve not only our respect and thanks, but our assurance that they will have the resources necessary to thrive as civilians, signed Representative John Garamendi, 8th District. Thank you. Thank you, Mel. I'd like to call on next the uh, Tom Barty, former council member of Vallejo, and he represents the Senator Bill Dodd. Tom. Good morning, everyone. A great crowd today. Thank you all for being here on this beautiful day on Mare Island. I'm here today representing Senator Dodd, um, who unfortunately wasn't able to be here, and I'm here on his behalf. I have a proclamation from the governor that I'd like to share with you, and it reads as follows. On Veterans Day, we show our enduring respect and reverence for those who have served in the United States military to defend our freedoms and way of life. While we can never repay these brave men and women for their selfless service, 
Our state is proud to pay tribute to veterans in deed as well as in word. The holiday was born of symbolism commemorating the armistice that took effect on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month of 1918 to end World War I. A year later, America dedicated November 11th as Armistice Day to celebrate the, the, that peace <clears throat> and the veterans who fought in the war to end all wars. All too soon, however, new wars followed leading to Armistice Day becoming Veterans Day in 1954, a holiday to honor veterans of all wars. Today, California is home to roughly 1.6 million veterans spanning all of the state's diverse populations and ingrained in every facet of our society. They are among the employees and the employers who drive California's world-class economy. They are elected officials and civic leaders. They work in public safety and as first responders. Our veterans are not so fortunate, struggling to overcome the physical and emotional scars of war and service. They need assistance and we know <clears throat> we have no higher duty than to support them. And that's why I work with the legislature to put a measure on the March 2024 ballot, Proposition 1, which includes $1 billion in funding to house veterans with behavioral mental health needs. We're also implementing a $50 million California Veterans Health Initiative to support veterans' mental health and suicide prevention. In 2025, we'll dedicate a new 240-bed skilled nursing and memory care facility at the Veterans Home in Yonville, California, one of our eight homes which cares for veterans and their spouses. And we continue to implement efforts that benefit all veterans, including assisting those discharged from military service under the Don't Ask, Don't Tell, as they pursue discharge upgrades to reestablish their eligibility for veterans benefits and prioritizing disabled veterans business owners in bidding for state contracts. California is dedicated to serving our veterans as they've served us. Today, as we reflect on all that we owe our veterans, let us commit to honoring them year round and throughout their lives in gratitude for the immense commitment and the personal sacrifices they have made for our state and for our nation. Sincerely, Governor Gavin Newsom, Governor of the State of California. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Barty. We also have uh, several elected officials uh, present today, and I'm going to call their names. And I want to start with Supervisor Solano County Supervisor District 2. Monica Brown is with us. Thank you, Supervisor Brown. We have Council Member J.R. Matula from the City of Vallejo. Council Member Peter Briganzer with us today. Thank you. Council member from the city of Novato, also a veteran, Steve Nash. We have um, Randy Reisner, city attorney, assistant city attorney for the city of Vallejo, also with us. Former council member Pippin Du is with us today. City commissioner of the SAB board, Andrea Soros, is also with us today. Thank you very much. And uh, again, I just wanted to, uh, again, thank you for being here. I am Rosanna. Oh, oh, sorry. We have council member Mina Loera Diaz with us also. Thank you, Mina, for joining us. Um, I am also a daughter of a World War II veteran who served uh, in the Philippine Army during World War II in the Philippines. Uh, and my husband is Nestor Aliga, who served in the Gulf War and in the Iraqi Enduring Freedom. So. I am very grateful and very proud. Now I am honored to introduce our keynote speaker, retired Colonel James Spaulding. Colonel Spaulding is a proud and decorated U.S. Air Force veteran with over 27 years of service. 
He is now the Chief of Operations, Pacific District, National Sanitary Administration, U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs. His portfolio encompasses 14 national cemeteries and seven satellite cemeteries. We are excited because his portfolio will soon include the Mare Island Naval Cemetery. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Colonel James Spaulding. Thank you, Vice Mayor, for that uh, very kind introduction. Um, before I get started, uh, let me also acknowledge uh, Mayor McConnell, all the elected uh, members that are here today, uh, distinguished visitors, and, and most of all, uh, the veterans. Uh, my fellow veterans that are here today, this day, this weekend, is all about you. Um, so welcome. I stand before you today in this hallowed ground of Mare Island Naval Cemetery with a heart brimming, brimming of respect and gratitude for those whose final resting place is here. It's an honor to join you commemorating Veterans Day, a day dedicated to all of those who've sacrificed so much for our great nation. The Department of Veterans Affairs is working diligently with the city of Vallejo to finalize all of those last documents uh, to make this transfer complete. And we hope to have that uh, very, very soon. Upon that historic transfer, the VA will assume responsibility for the administration and maintenance of the Mare Island Naval Cemetery. And I want to assure... And I want to assure everyone that although the cemetery has remained closed for interments for over 20 years, it continues to be a beacon of reverence and respect in the local area for all those who've served. The VA takes up this mantle and we understand the gravity of this responsibility. It's a sacred trust that we solemnly accept to care for the graves and maintain the memory of veterans who've served and their families who've been laid to rest here. It's not just a duty, but an honor. We recognize that this cemetery is not just a place of remembrance, but it's a testament to the bravery, the honor, and the dedication to all those interred here. We pledge to uphold the dignity and sanctity of this hallowed ground to ensure it remains a place of where future generations can come and pay their respects and learn about the rich history of our nation's heroes. In the near future, we'll begin designing improvements to this historic cemetery to meet the National Cemetery Administration's appearance standards. We believe that this resting place of our heroes should reflect the immense gratitude and respect that we as a nation have for them. These standards are not just guidelines, but they're a reflection of the very values our veterans have defended, honor, respect, and integrity. We understand that they are not just mere graves, but the final resting place of real people who loved, laughed, cried, and most importantly, they served their country with unflinching bravery and selflessness. Each headstone represents a story of sacrifice and dedication, a story that deserves to be remembered and respected. In countless ceremonies like this across the country this weekend, Americans are honoring veterans, patriots who since the war for independence have stood watch over and defended our liberty. Soldiers, sailors, airmen, marine, coast guardmen, and guardians who stepped forward and answered the call to arms. From Bunker Hill to Baghdad, from Kings Mountain to Kandahar, we're the beneficiaries of their vigilance and determination to uphold the democratic values and beliefs on which our nation was founded. America has been blessed like no other country in the history of the world. The sacrifices of our armed forces have given us the security and freedom in which to grow and flourish as a nation in law, human rights, in business, in economics, in science, technology, in education, and the arts. They've enabled the United States to stand as a beacon of hope and freedom to others across the world, drawing millions to our shores, a model of democracy for the world. In conclusion, as we commemorate Veterans Day at the Mare Island Naval Cemetery, we remember and honor not only the brave men and women interred here, but the millions of veterans and service members who've served our nation. 
We stand on the shoulders of giants. We pledge to honor their memory, not just today, but every day. Thank you all for attending today's ceremony, your presence at these remembrances, your words of gratitude to our active duty troops and to our veterans, as well as your continued advocacy for all of them, reinforces the covenant between America and the men and women who protect and serve her. We do this because we recognize a basic truth. The deeds of the American veteran bind us to our noble past, strengthen us in our difficult present, and inspire us to meet the future challenges that we may face as a nation. Thank you all. God bless all of our veterans. God bless the United States of America. Thank you, Colonel Spalding. Let us now welcome U.S. Army Lieutenant Colonel Douglas Hayes. He has over 20 years of exemplary service. He successfully led the Department of Defense Innovative Readiness Training Program Task Force that actually restored this cemetery, which resulted in the 8th O-First Engineering Company and other units receiving the prestigious Army Superior Unit Award. He is married to Roseanne, who is also with us today. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Lieutenant Colonel Douglas Hayes. Thank you. Mayor, distinguished guests, um, it is humbling. Me, me and my soldiers, we are humbled and very proud to have been associated with the sacred ground that you see behind me. Um, there were several units involved in this task force. We have the 801st Engineer Company here at Mare Island. We have the 374th Sappers over at Concord, California. We also had the 322nd Engineer Company from Sloan, Nevada, down south of, of Las Vegas. And then we also had, uh, can't forget the headquarters company. We had the headquarters of the 397th Engineer Battalion in Marina that also assisted along with the uh, 213th Engineer Facility Detachment. And we are very proud. You know, when you get to work on such a unusual project like this, as you're working among these veterans, you begin to get to know them a little bit. It, it, it just comes to you. Uh, for example, in section F, which is the section just on the other side of this fence line, right down here, let me introduce you to Petty Officer Claude Maroon, who as a young man joined the Navy. He was born and raised in Sacramento, and he did his training in San Diego. But unfortunately, during that time period, he came down with a terrible case of pneumonia. And so he would pass away and the Navy to have him rest close to his family, the Navy would pay to have him ship north to the Mare Island Naval Cemetery. Now, his pneumonia was just not any ordinary pneumonia. The world would come to know that as the Spanish flu. And if you look at section F, this section just on the other side of this fence line, most of the veterans in that section were victims of the Spanish flu. There's a naval nurse, Drusilla Gunn, who is buried right up here. Yes, another victim of the Spanish flu. And who can forget Lieutenant Halford, one of the three Medal of Honor winners here in the cemetery. Back in the 1870s, the USS Saginaw was marooned on a reef about 50 miles west of Midway. And the commanding officer of the USS Saginaw called for volunteers before it sank they were able to get a little bit of food, a little bit of water, and they were able to get two lifeboats off of the Saginaw. The, com the commanding officer called for volunteers to sail over 1,200 miles of open ocean back to Honolulu. Well, the executive officer and eight enlisted men. At that time, Lieutenant Halford, not an officer, he was enlisted, but he was one of the eight volunteers. So they get in this lifeboat and they commence the sailing 1,200 miles from west of Midway Island back to Honolulu. After 31 days, the island of Kauai comes over the horizon, but the surf is so rough that as they attempt to make landfall on Kauai, the boat capsizes and everyone drowns, except for Halford. Halford, they were all so weak from starvation and thirst, Halford had just enough strength to pull himself out of that surf and raise the alarm that his shipmates from the Saginaw were 1,200 miles away on a little piece of rock sticking out of the ocean. 
And so for that, President Ulysses Grant awarded him the Medal of Honor. And it was one of those great privileges of working on this cemetery that his great grandson came out here to visit with us and talk with me and my men. And so I had the opportunity, the pleasure, the honor to meet with his great grandson. And yes, he brought the Medal of Honor from, from his great grandpa with him. And so me and several of my men had the, the honor of holding that Medal of Honor. What an experience. I wanna say that I am mindful, you know, freedom, we have a lot of great veterans here. Most of these veterans, they died during circumstances of peace. There are a few, believe it or not, if you do your research, there are a few who passed away as a result of wounds received in the Spanish-American War. Um, but I'm mindful today, every year, it seems I'm, I'm always mindful of just how expensive freedom is. And today I am mindful of the 29th Marines. The 29th Marines was a regiment that landed on April 1st, 1945 on Okinawa. They had a strength of 3,512 Marines when they landed. 88 days later, 2,821 had been killed in action. Freedom can truly be expensive sometimes. And when I hear numbers like that, I think of the men, but I really think of the families. I think of all the birthdays, all the wedding anniversaries, all the Christmases that were sacrificed so that we may be here today to enjoy this freedom that we have. And so with that, you know, once again, my man and I, we are grateful for the opportunity to be here. Next month, I understand that uh, the division commander, Major General Miller, is planning to be here at the cemetery in December during the Urethling e events. And at that time, the units involved in this task force will receive their uh, streamers for their guidons. But um, I would just say, ladies and gentlemen, enjoy the cemetery and enjoy the service of our fellow Americans. Um, let us never forget, let us never forget all the birthdays and all the anniversaries. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lieutenant Colonel Hayes. What a, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm very touched, deeply touched by the remarks of uh, Colonel Spaulding and Lieutenant Colonel Hayes. Thank you so much. Next, we will have the wreath laying or offering of flowers at the memorial site. It is a ritual that symbolizes the beauty and brevity of life. Let us now invite Mayor McConnell, Colonel Spaulding, and Lieutenant Colonel Hayes to lay the wreath. We also thank Kevin and Susan Milton for providing this beautiful wreath for today's Veterans Day ceremony. Thank you so much. is unique to the United States military as the call is sounded at funerals, wreath laying ceremonies, and memorial services. Let us thank Naval Sea Cadet Petty Officer Steve Mash for playing the taps. Please stand if you can. If you can. Present arms. That was uh, Steve Nash III, grandson of veteran Steve Nash. Thank you very much. <laughs> Please remain standing if you can for the benediction by Reverend Hector Fulhenshel, who is a U.S. Army veteran and the pastor of the Lord's Fellowship Church based here at Mare Island. Uh, my father, my great-grand-uncle, was a, a U.S. Army veteran for serving World War II. My father was in the Navy serving uh, Korea and Vietnam. I served in Vietnam. My youngest son retired recently from the Air Force, but he served as Af in Afghanistan. So we're a proud veteran family. Amen? Amen. All right. Let's, so let's go ahead and bow our heads. 
Heavenly Father, we honor our veterans, worthy men and women who gave their best when they were called upon to serve and protect their company, country. We thank you for the brave who fought and continue to fight so courageously for our nation. We pray that you will bless them with their unselfish service in the continual struggle to preserve our freedoms, our safety, our country's heritage for all of us. We respect them, we thank them, we honor them, we are proud of them. Bless them abundantly for the hardships they faced, for the sacrifices they made for their different contributions to America's victories over tyranny and oppression. We ask for your covering and blessing for over, over them and their families. We pray that you would be gracious and encircle them with your peace. We pray for your great favor and goodness to the evident in their lives. We thank you for, their, for your abundant love and care for us. Lord, please help us with your wisdom and your compassion for others. May you bless us all with your never-ending love. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you. Thank you very much, U.S. Air Force veteran Hector Fulhenshell. That concludes our program for today. Thank you to our beloved veterans for your continuing dedication to duty to improve the American way of life. After we listen to Chuck Jameson play Amazing Grace with the bagpipes, please visit the Vallejo Navy League table for refreshments. And please support the Wreaths Across America project by sponsoring a wreath today. And Steve Nash is in charge of that project. Author Joyce Giles is also hosting a Mare Island Cemetery history book discussion. And we also have various veterans brochures and pamphlets for you available today. And please also visit Rebuilding Together of Solano County booth at the entrance for their safe at home kits valued at $200, but it's free for all qualified Solano veterans. Again, we thank everyone for being here today to pay tribute to all our beloved veterans and may God bless each of them. May God bless the United States of America. Thank you very much.